Hi, Peter Charles here, Folks for Life Fly Fishing. And in this video, we're going to look at flies for rainbow trout and brook trout because they basically hit the same patterns. Now, part of it is to do with the type of uh, con water conditions we usually find them in. Fast flowing, turbulent, highly oxygenated water. Uh, some places I fish for brookies also have rainbow trout in them. So we've come, we may not find them exactly the same place in the stream, but nevertheless, they like that cold, clear, turbulent, well-oxygenated water, especially the brook trout. Uh, now, we can find them in lakes and slow-moving rivers as well, obviously. I mean, I fish for them in Maine, uh, brook trout in Maine, that were both in the fast water and in the slower water that, that was downstream of the fast water. So we, we got them in both conditions. So really, when, you, when you're setting out to fish for them, you, you, I think it's going to be sort of condition-dependent whether you're going to be in really fast turbulent conditions or more flat water uh, conditions. And um, so let's take a look at some of these and, and uh, some of these flies and talk about how I might employ them. Well, I've got a selection here. And first off, let me talk about this little guy. Normally, I would do the mini brookie version of this, which is orange rather than yellow. This has been a phenomenally effective little fly for small brookies in little streams. Uh, and I've nailed dozens and dozens and dozens with this little fly. Uh, as I said, I just do it in the mini brookie version, which is orange instead of yellow. But other than that, I just don't happen to have one to show you. But uh, other than that, it's, it's you know, a great small stream, small fish solution. The rest of them, you notice, the, these five here, bright bodies. Now, when you're fishing in turbulent conditions... Uh, especially if you're fishing in a boulder garden and, uh, you know, the fish are behind rocks and, you know, in front of rocks or in sides, all the places they tend to nestle, they're not going to get a long-range view of a fly coming in. Not like we get in a lake or in a slower river situation. They're, it's just going to appear, bang, it's going to be there. And you want some flash to catch all that bright sparkle that's coming off the water because it's, you know, especially on a sunny day, that's very, very vi vibrant underneath the water with all that white water and all that movement and all those bubbles. So you want something that shows up. And it's, uh, it's mainly not the, maybe the best uh, environment for dull flies. So you want some splash, flash. You want some color that'll make a splash. Uh, so you want something that's going to show up and show up quickly and catch their attention. Uh, and uh, so something with a you know some bright body, some red on them, some yellow, some gold, any any nice bright punchy color, that's going to work. Now if you get into slower water conditions, you you should really be starting to you could use the same flies. Don't get me wrong, you can use all the same flies, but you uh, you can also start to look at the uh, the um, less bright colors. Uh, and um, say, for example, we used a lot of uh, feather wing streamers in, in Maine, uh, the classic Kerry Stevens style. And uh, a lot of those did not have silver bodies, they had floss bodies. And they weren't particularly bright, or some of them weren't particularly colorful either. Uh, and the thing is, though, a lot of the places we fished them, the water was very clear and not moving particularly fast. So it wasn't overly turbulent. Fish got a good look at them, a long look at them. So uh, flies that were more imitative and not necessarily abundantly colored did really well. I did okay also with, a, actually quite well, with a Mickey Finn in more turbulent water. Same kind of idea, really bright, punchy fly in turbulent conditions catch the fish's attention. So if I'm fishing slower water for both rainbows and um, brook trout, I've had some good feedback from people on my perch pattern here being a good baby brook trout imitation. And apparently in slower water where there's bigger brookies, apparently that's been a dynamite fly. I mean, I tied this for brown trout and, and bass where there's also a perch population. Uh, I wasn't really thinking it of as being a uh, good fly for brookies, but I've been told by people who tied this pattern and tried it in, in brook trout water that it's been quite a producer. And of course, the, the brown trout weemer works everywhere. You could do this in more of a, a rainbow colors if you wanted, substituting a, a more of a pearlescent flash instead of gold and olive instead of uh, brown. And uh, you've got a little baby rainbow, a little bit of pink on it. 
good to go. I mean, you'll probably catch dozens and dozens of rainbows on there because they're all cannibalistic to one point or another. Uh, so uh, having something that looks like, one, you know, a little version of them, they'll eat it. Trust me on this one. So as I say, the thing about uh, for rainbows and brookies, think about the water conditions you're fishing in and the bright and that turbulent, you know, lots of bright white, uh, white bubbles in the water, you know, and, uh, you know, they don't get much of a look at it. You want to give them something bright, punchy, that's going to catch your attention right away. Like I said, Mickey Finn worked fine for me in, in, in Maine, but when I went into the slower water, I was fishing a lot of the feather wing patterns that were more imitative. And they all worked in the right application. So keep that in mind. Think about the water conditions and um, fish them accordingly. Cheers.